guys. Okay, so here are some farm videos. Um, as requested, I'm going to first touch on some medications that can help treat um, PUD, peptic ulcer disease, and also GERD, gastro, gastroesophageal reflux disease or disorder. Okay, um, but I first want to touch on PUD. If you have not watched the videos about GERD or PUD, then go ahead and watch those first, okay, before you tap into the farm videos. Um, but I'm going to touch on PUD first, all right, and the PUD treatment. So if you watch that video, then you already kind of know that um, one of the most common causes for the development of PUD is due to H. pylori bacterial infections and um, them not being treated um, right away. So since it is a bacterial infection, um, certain antibiotics have been chosen to treat that infection. Okay, so... Um, PUD is the ulcer, okay, peptic ulcer disease, but how that generates is from untreated, okay, well, one of the ways, from untreated H. pylori bacterial infection, okay? Um, so some of the antibiotics used to help treat this would be amoxicillin, bismuth, um, clarithromycin, metronidazole, if I'm saying that correctly, tetracycline, and um, tenidazole. Those are some, um, some of them that you can um, utilize or that are prescribed to eradicate H. pylori bacteria. Okay, um, sometimes these have to be used in combination, um, combination of maybe two or three of these antibiotics for uh, probably two weeks at a time um, to increase the effectiveness um, to eradicate this bacteria. So as a nurse for nursing administration, um, Primarily metronidazole, you want to give that with food. Also amoxicillin um, to give that with food to decrease any gastric disturbances and GI upset. Okay, you do want to let your patients know um, if that you may experience some nausea, um, and to complete the full course of the medications, not to stop them when they start to feel better. You want them. Do you want to educate them to complete it, the full course? Okay, complete the full course to eradicate the bacteria thoroughly, okay? Um, so now that we've gotten back um, antibiotics out of the way, I do wanna touch on antacids, histamine 2 receptor antagonists, and PPIs, your proton pump inhibitors, and cytoprotective drugs, okay? We're gonna touch on those first. So first one that we're gonna knock out are your antacids, okay? Your prototype is aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide, you have magnesium hydroxide, you also have calcium carbonate, okay? Um, what your antacids do and how they work is it helps to neutralize the acid, okay? Neutralize the acid and reduce the acidity of your gastric acid. So we know that we um, our stomach contents are already acidic, right? They're already acidic. But with some of these disorders, it can throw off that acidic balance and make it even more acidic than the stomach can tolerate. So we, want, we would want to take an antacid to kind of neutralize that a little bit, bit, bring it back to the norm, okay? Or reduce the acidity level of the gastric acid, okay? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So therapeutic uses for this. It can also help with peptic ulcer disease because that acidity um, of those gastric secretions is like throwing salt in this wound, right? It can also prevent stress-induced ulcers. It can help relieve the manifestations and your signs and symptoms of GERD as well, okay? Um, some key things that I do want to point out when it comes to antacids, never administer them with any other medication. It can disrupt the absorption process, okay? And I'll come back to those in just a second. Your H2s, which are your histamine 2 receptor antagonists, okay? Your prototype medication for this is cimetidine, okay? Famotidine are, is another medication um, for an H2, famotidine, nizatidine, also ranitidine, okay? Out of all of those, nizatidine is the one um, that is only given PO, PO use only, okay? And um, the expected action for these medications is to block those H2 receptors, okay? You know antagonists should have been a tell-all to block, okay? Block those receptors, which can suppress the secretion of your gastric acid 
It also then lowers the concentration of the hydrogen ions inside of your stomach. Okay, so for therapeutic uses, we want to use this to help prevent or even treat gastric ulcers, okay, even for GERD, all right? Um, as I mentioned, these medications are used for both, okay? These can also be used in conjunction with those antibiotics that I mentioned um, to treat the ulcers that are caused by H. pylori, okay? Next are going to be your PPIs, your proton pump inhibitors, okay? Your prototype med for this is omeprazole, Okay, some of the other medications, pantoprazole, lansoprazole, dexalansoprazole. You get the you get the um the common suffix here. Zol, 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 esomeprazole. Okay. And what these do is these block the um, block basal and stimulated acid production. Okay, so think of it like uh, we have a pump, okay? We have a pump in our stomach that's pumping out the acid, okay? But again, if we have an ulcer. That acid is like throwing salt in that wound. So we wanna kinda of stop and slow that pump down to slow down that acid um, that acid production, okay? It's also going to reduce the acid secretion, right? But it is an irreversible action, okay? So speaking of irreversible, this medication is not used for long term. We ultimately need our gastric acid, okay? So we cannot use this for a long term. This is a short term medication. Okay, short-term therapy um, for uh, your gastric or duodenal ulcers. Um, it could also be used for erosive esophagitis and even for GERD. Okay, four to eight weeks is the limit for your PPIs, your proton pump inhibitors. Okay, um, for special cases such as hyper secretory conditions, um, those that's probably the special occasion that can um, those patients can use it for long term. But in a general sense, these are not used for long term. Four to eight weeks max. Okay. Um, the last one that I mentioned was your cytoprotective or your mucosal protective medications, and an example of this will be sucrophate. Sucrophate will help to protect, okay? It acts as a protective barrier. It's actually a very viscous and thick substance um, that is taken orally usually. And um, what it does, it kind of sticks and covers up the ulcer. So if this is the ulcer, you swallow it, it sticks and covers it like this and it acts as a barrier, okay? It acts as a barrier and a protectant, hence cytoprotective, okay? Mucosal protectant. Okay, it's gonna act like as a, as a barrier and as a protectant to protect that ulcer from anything else in the stomach to allow it to heal, okay? So just to kind of recap a little bit, your antacids are going to neutralize and decrease the, P, the gastric pH, okay? Your H2 um, histamine receptor antagonist, this is going to um, neutralize the acid and help to promote healing. Your PPIs are going to stop acid um, your stop your secretion of the acid, stop the pump, okay? And your cytoprotective drugs are going to protect the lining of the stomach from um, further damage and protect protect the ulcer even from further damage, okay? So just a quick recap: um, some complications to these medications. So I'll start with the antacids first. Um, fluid retention, okay? Diarrhea. Uh, frequent burping, alkalosis, constipation, hypermagnesemia, even some electrolyte imbalance, okay? For your H2s, um, some of the complications for those would consist of um, halluc some, there could be some CNS effects such as uh, hallucinations, um, confusion, uh, restlessness, and even some constipation and or diarrhea. Um, for the PPIs, okay, headache, some abdominal pain, nausea, it could even worsen to um, some pneumonia, osteoporosis, okay? So you want to look into things like that or look for any of those complications, okay? Um, as far as interactions go, I kind of already mentioned with the antacids, do not give um, antacids with any other medication. It could prevent the absorption of many, many drugs. So do not combine those, okay? You wanna at least wait an hour 
um, in between taking antacids and another medication. Okay. Um, that is pretty much it for the most part. Or should I go over? Yes. Let me tackle um, your nursing implications and your client teaching. Okay. So smoking and alcohol intake, we want to go ahead and decrease that or stop it all together. Um, you want to make sure your patients is monitoring their stress levels and kind of keeping cool. Okay. Fluid. Okay. Increase their fluid intake. All right. And then monitor for any symptoms of GI distress. Okay, these are also supposed to help the GI, so it should not be harming the GI or making things worse. So you wanna educate your patients to look for that and you as the nurse also want to look for that. Okay, for the most part, that's pretty much it. Bye.